in our video for today, we will try to solve this problem involving cables. And so we have a cable that supports two vertical loads, and then the sag at point B of the cable is 2 meters, and so uh, that distance is this one, this is 2 meters, and then we have to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reactions at supports A and D, and also the tensions in the three segments of the cable, and also the length L of the cable, which is just essentially this length plus this length, and then plus this length. Now first, uh, we have to label our reactions. Now since this is a hinge support and also this one, then it will have vertical and horizontal reactions. And so let's write that one. Uh, we have AY and we also have AX. And then the total reaction at A will just be the resultant of these two reactions, uh, one vertical and one horizontal. And so let's write that as RA. And then, by equilibrium, uh, if we consider joint A, RA will simply be equal to the tension of cable AB. And so let's say uh, we are considering this joint, this will be the tension at AB. And then these two are equal. And then for D, we also have two reactions, uh, one vertical and one horizontal. Let's say this is DX and this is DY. And then this will have a total reaction of RD. And then RD will also be equal to the tension at CD. So let's just say it's this one. Now by summing up moments about our supports, we can find dy and ay. Now if we'll take moments about d, we can find ay. Now that's because ax will be excluded in our equation because it acts along this line. And so taking moments about point d uh, equal to zero, we have uh, ay which will cause a clockwise moment about d. And so that will be positive. And then we'll multiply that by the moment arm. Now the moment arm is the perpendicular distance going to point D. Now that's uh, 6 meters plus 5 meters and then plus 4 meters. So 6 plus 5 and then plus 4. And then we have uh, 10 kn which will cause a counterclockwise moment about D. And so this will be minus, minus 10 and then uh, multiplied by the moment arm which is this distance because this is perpendicular to 10 kn. And so that will be 5 plus 4 meters. So 5 plus 4. And then another minus for the 6 k and load. And so we have 6 and then multiplied by the moment arm which is this perpendicular distance. Now this is 4 meters. So times 4. And then we will set that to 0. And so using our calculators, we will be able to obtain this value. Uh, Ay is our unknown. So we have x and then times 6 plus 5 plus 4. Or you can write this as 15. Uh, that depends on you. And then minus 10 times 5 plus 4, which is 9. And then minus 6 times 4. And then we will set this one to 0. And so now we can get our Ay, which is 7.6. And so Ay is 7.6 kilonewtons. And so we can write that here. And so now we can consider the whole system. Uh, if we will sum up the vertical forces, then we can get dy. And so summing up forces vertical, we have uh, Ay, which is acting upward, so uh, that's positive. And then minus 10 kN, which is acting downward. And then another minus for 6kN. And then uh, plus dy, which is upward. And then we will set this one to 0. And so we have uh, dy equal to 10 plus 6 and then minus 7.6, which gives us 8.4. And so dy is equal to 8.4kN. And so now we can write this one here. And then our dy is uh, 8.4 kn. Now to solve ax, we can actually take moments about b. We can make a cut here and then we can consider the forces to the left. And so uh, we will consider this one. And so considering segment ab, which is this one, we can take moments about b. And then we will set that one to zero. And so that will be uh, ay times the moment arm toward b which is 6 meters because this is the perpendicular distance and so this is your moment arm and so this will be 6 and then this is positive because Ay is upward and then it will cause a clockwise rotation about B and then for Ax we have minus now why minus? Uh, this is minus because uh, if this is your moment center and then you will apply a force acting to the left at point A then that will cause a counterclockwise moment because your body will rotate toward this direction 
and so minus uh, ax multiplied by the moment arm which is 2 meters because again uh, we are considering the perpendicular distance and so if we extend a line here it will form a right angle with this line and so this is 2 meters and then we will set this one to zero. However, uh, we have a value for AY, which is what we obtained earlier. Now that's 7.6 KN. So this will be uh, 7.6. And so using our calculators, uh, we have 7.6 times 6 and then minus 2 times X. That's equal to zero. And then that will give us uh, 22.8. And so our AX will be 22.8 kilonewtons. And so we can write that one here. And so our AX will be 22.8 kilonewtons. And so to get the tension at B, we will just essentially get our A. Now our A is the resultant of these two forces. And so uh, we can say our A is equal to the tension at AB, which is equal to the resultant. Uh, so this is square root of AX squared plus AY squared. And so this will be square root of 22.8 squared and then plus 7.6 squared. And so this will give us 24.03. And so that will be our answer. Because we have to find the tensions in the three segments. And then for this one, the horizontal and vertical components of the reactions... Uh, this will be our answer for the support at A. Uh, AX is 22.8 and AY is 7.6. And so let's just color this one yellow. And so this will also be yellow. And also this one. And then for the tensions, uh, let's color that one orange. And so this will be orange. And so now, because we already have AX, uh, we can solve DX. We can sum up horizontal forces. Now if you look at our figure, AX and DX are the only horizontal forces acting on our system. And so to maintain equilibrium, we can simply say that AX is equal to DX. And so since AX is 22.8, then that means that our DX is also equal to 22.8. And so this will be our horizontal component of the reaction at D. And so let's color this one yellow. And so now since we have DX and DY, we can now solve for TCD. We can simply get the resultant of these components. And so as we have established, RD is equal to TCD, which is equal to the square root of DX squared plus DY squared. And so we have a square root of 22.8 squared and then plus 8.4 squared. And so this will give us 24.298 or simply 24.3. And so this will be 24.3 kN. And so let's color this one orange. And so now we will be able to find the tension in cable BC. Now to get that, uh, we can consider joint B. If we will consider joint B, we have this one. This will be A, and then this will be B, and then this will be BC. Now we have 10 kilonewtons acting here. And so we will include this one in our calculations. Now BC is a diagonal force. However, we can reduce this one into components. And so let's say uh, this is BCX. And then this is BCY. And so we can sum up vertical forces and horizontal forces. Now we already know the components of uh, AB. Now this is uh, ABX which is equal to AX. And so this is 22.8 KN. And then we also know the vertical component which is uh, 7.6 KN. And so this is ABY which is 7.6 KN. And so BCX will simply be equal to the other horizontal force. And so this will be 22.8 kN. And then summing up forces vertical, we have ABY which is acting upward. So that will be positive. And then plus BCY. And then minus 10 because this is acting downward. And then we will set this one to 0. 7.6 plus uh, our unknown and then minus 10 equals 0. We have BCY equal to 2.4. And so BCY is... 2.4 kN. So this is 2.4 kN. And so now we can already get the tension in cable BC. Now that will just be the resultant of these components. And so uh, TBC is equal to the square root of uh, BCX squared plus BCY squared. And so this will be 22.8 squared plus 2.4 squared. 
and then that will give us 22.93 and so let's color this one orange again these values highlighted in yellow are the horizontal and vertical components of the reactions and then these numbers highlighted in orange these are the tensions in the three segments and so now we will find L or the length of the cable now we first have to determine uh, this vertical distance now let's project a line from here we need this distance and so to get that uh, we first have to find YC now we can compute YC using this slope. Now how are we going to find this slope? Uh, we can find that one by using the tangent function because this angle is just equal to this angle, uh, this one. Now again, our dx is 22.8. And so using the tangent function, uh, we have tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And so the opposite side is 8.4 kn and then the adjacent side is 22.8. And so using arctan, we can get the angle. Uh, 8.4 divided by 22.8, we have 20.22. Now this is in degrees. And so now we can get yc. Now tangent of theta will be equal to the opposite side, which is uh, yc, because that's opposite to theta. And then divided by the adjacent side, which is 4 meters. And so this will be 4. And so tan 20.22 uh, equals x over 4 we have yc equal to 1.47 so yc is 1.47 meters now if this is 1.47 then we can get this distance that will simply be uh, 2 minus 1.47 now that will give us 0 0.53 and so this is 0 0.53 meters now in order to get the length of each segment we can just simply get the hypotenuse now the length of AB will be equal to a square root of 6 squared and then plus 2 squared uh, considering this triangle. And so this will give us 6.32 and then this is in meters. And then to get the length of BC uh, we have square root of 5 meters and then squared and then plus 0 0.53 meters squared. And so this will give us 5.03. And then to get the length of CD, we have square root of uh, 4 squared for this one and then plus 1.47 squared. And so this is 4.26. And then to get the total length, we will add LAB plus LBC and then plus LCD, which is 6.32 plus 5.03 and then plus 4.26. And so this will be 15.61. And so this will be our answer for the length. And so I hope this was able to help you.